Life on the Nebraska Prairie in a Dugout Home. In the story My Antonia by Willa Cather, orphan Jim Burden travels to Nebraska to live with his grandparents. Jim's grandparents were prosperous farmers living in the only wet wood house west of Blackhawk. All of the other neighbors lived in sod homes or dugouts, including Antonia and her family, the Shimerdas. I believe the Burden homestead looks something like this. The dugout home the neighbors lived in are exactly as they sound. These early settlers used shovels to dig a rectangular hole into a slight hill. Then they would smooth out the floor with a slight slant towards the door to let the water drain out. Three walls are from the earth. Then they would build up a fourth wall with wood or logs if available. Otherwise, they would use sod blocks. In this wall, they would put the door maybe and maybe a window. The roof was made with poles, brush, hay, and earth. These dugouts were easy and inexpensive to construct. If they could afford them, the floor of the dugout home was covered with rough wooden planks. Otherwise, the dirt floor was sprinkled with water daily and swept with crude grass brooms until the surface was hard and smooth as finished concrete. Some made plaster from limestone to coat the earth walls. Others lined them with newspaper pasted or pinned up with small sharpened sticks to keep the dirt from brushing off. Proper dugouts were surprisingly comfortable homes. The thick sod walls and roof provided great insulation. The homes stayed cool in the summer and were easy to heat in the winter. But Antonio didn't live in a proper dugout. I imagine Antonio's dugout looked more like this. Grandma Burden describes it as a place no better than a badger hole, no proper dugout at all. Jim describes Antonia's dugout in the following passage from chapter 10 of the novel. As we approached the Shimerdas, we heard the frosty whine of the pump and saw Antonia, her head tied up and her cotton dress blown about her, throwing all her weight on the pump as it went up and down. She heard our wagon, looked back over her shoulder, and catching up her pail of water, started at a run for the hole in the bank. Miss Shimerda answered the door before we knocked. At once she began to cry, talking very fast in her own language and pointing to her feet, which were tied up in rags, looking about at everyone accusingly. The man was sitting on a stump behind the stove. Antonio was washing pans and dishes in a dark corner. The crazy boy lay under the only window on a gunny sack stuffed with straw. As soon as we entered, he threw a grain sack over the crack in the bottom of the door. The air in the cave was stifling, and it was very dark, too. A lighted lantern hung over the stove and threw out a feeble yellow glimmer. Miss Shimerda snatched off the covers of two barrels behind the door and made us look into them. In one, there were some potatoes that had been frozen and were rotting. In the other was a little pile of flour. Mr. Shimerda came out from behind the stove. He took grandmother's arm and led her behind the stove to the back of the room. In the rear wall was another little cave, a round hole, not much bigger than an oil barrel, scooped out in the black earth. In a despairing voice, he said, Yulka, my Antonio. Grandmother drew back. You mean they sleep in there, your girls? Mr. Shimerda bowed his head. Antonio slipped under his arm. It's very cold on the floor, and this is warm like the badger hole. I like for sleep here, she insisted eagerly. Grandmother sighed. You'll have a better house after a while, Antonia, and you'll forget these hard times. At the end of the story, grown-up Jim returns to Nebraska on his way home to New York after a business trip. He stops to see Antonia as he had promised to do 20 years ago when he last saw her. He finds her now as Miss Antonia Kuzik, now the mother of 11 children. She and her husband bought a farm and live with their children in their wooden house. They have a cellar filled with preserved fruits and vegetables from their farm. Antonia has indeed improved her conditions. No more dirt floor dug out home or barrels of rotting potatoes. She is truly happy and proud of her life as a mother, a wife, and a farmer. And this makes Jim entirely happy.